day, very good evening, good morning, good afternoon or whatever. Welcome to the Flight Sim and other stuff and this video is going to be about hardware or a hardware alternative, shall we put it. Now, many of my friends have got overhead panels, they got, I, I got one friend who's got a complete cockpit for a 737, I've got friends that have uh, taken aeroplanes cut them up and turn them into home simulators. They look fantastic. They are brilliant. Um, they require a lot of expertise in mechanical engineering and electronics, and they also require a budget, which I don't have. So, now I did used to make panels, um, but my home office, because of COVID, is now used for work, and I don't have room for a home cockpit. And of course I switched to VR, so that's not needed. What I find really frustrating when I'm flying, though, is using the mouse and keyboard. Sorry, most of you get on the way with it. Uh, I just don't get it. Um, yeah, take this example. Here I am, and I'm sitting in my 737... No, I'm sitting in my Airbus uh, Gatwick, and I want to power it up. And I have to keep using the mouse and keyboard, and it just doesn't feel real. It feels, oh, it's frustrating. Um, you know the sort of thing. I'm sitting here, and oh, let's uh, put the mouse in there. And then I'll go down here, and I'll switch this on, and then I'll go to the overhead panel, and then I'll flick the power on, and then I'll flick this and flick this and rotate these, etc., etc. Would it be nice if I could do it without touching the mouse? And there is a way of doing it. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And the product that I found and I've started using is Stream Deck. And they're not that expensive. So. This is the big one, this is the XL, and you can pick this one up on Amazon for what, 210 pounds? And there's the slightly smaller one, which I'll also give a quick mention to in a minute, that's about 130 pound. And it's a programmable keyboard, but it's so much more. So, so much more. To use it, you are gonna need a commercial piece of software. This is uh, Lorby's access and o's now lorby has been around oh, forever so those that have been into the flight sim as long as i have goes all the way back to fsx through the p3d stuff as can be seen and now access and o's supports microsoft flight simulator it is similar in some respects to um that other one Sorry, I'm uh, going all over the place. Spadnex, yeah. used to use Spadnex. In fact, I still use Spadnex. Or I was using it a lot up until I uh, rediscovered Lorby's Access and O's. So get a copy of that. Um, it's, God, that's not very expensive at all. It is, what, 18 euros on Sim Market. So you'll need a copy of that. And you'll need a Stream Deck. Now, if you just want to give this a try... Actually, Stream Deck does a Stream Deck mobile, which looks like this. So it just turns your phone, uh, it's a, an iPhone or an Android handset, and it turns it into the Stream Deck standard, the 15 button one. And it's perfect. There's no tactileness on it, so you don't feel the buttons going in and out. But it is, uh, if you just want to give it a try and you don't want to spend £130, uh, this is the one to start with. I think you could start with that anyway. So here's my one. Let's uh, get rid of that. Here's my live one. <laughs> and, you know, I've got a bunch of airplanes listed along the top here. Uh, these are all available free of charge. Um, although I would suggest you might want to make a donation to this guy. Obviously, it's on flightsim.to. I get the pronunciation of the name wrong. I do apologize. Uh, Gonzelli has done a bunch of these 
profiles and you just download them put them into flight deck and it all works for you and if you want to build your own and it's not that hard uh, he's even giving you the icon so you can do some graphics what does all this look like when you go live so let's show you once again my stream deck and i've got a bunch of aircraft along the top all set up for me so i've got a tbm and if i go into that you can see i've got a load of buttons for the tbm i've got the g3000 and we can go into there and we got the buttons and we can knobs and things like that but let's look at the a320 because there's an awful lot of buttons in this cockpit and we've got access to the lights we've got access to what you have to do on ground and i'll take you through this in a second and even the mcdu so you got the left and right buttons down there so we got the left one to six the right one to six there's even the keyboard and there is even a numeric keyboard so a320 now i would point out that this a320 setup is very much a beta version as Gonzetti says on flightsim.to um, the fly-by-wire is a fast moving constantly being updated and the variables are broken on some of these not all the buttons work 100 percent at the moment but he's updating it constantly so keep an eye out for it or have a go fixing the uh, changes yourself but let's see it in action this is the important so here i am i'm on the ground so let's hit the on the ground button here and here's everything i need to do and of course i need to put the external power on so i'll press the external power button external power's coming i need to switch the pumps off next you can see here even if i'm not looking at the overhead panel i can switch the pumps off and as i switch the pumps off the label changes on here I didn't switch the batteries on and off, so let's do that now. I think these buttons aren't working. No. Although the labels are going off, the buttons aren't actuating. They were working, but fly-by-wire have just done a change. So we have that, and what else? Oh, the GPS, the ideas. Let's switch those on. So the buttons there at the moment all pointing to the left. Let's start button number one. The icon goes up. The button's moved. Number two, looking up here. There. And wait for the back light to go out. And number three. And then we need to put the emergency lights. And we've got to put the beacon on. <laughs> it's lit up. Um, what else are we going to do in here? Our oh, crew supply, and then we can go back. And now we want to start programming the MCDU. Oh no, we want to do the internal lights. So let's put the look at this here, and I've turned it off. Increase it. See that going up and that one up then we'll go to all displays go down here i can turn this up the lights pedestal this one up all the lights working and you get feedback on there do the mcdu so press the MCDU button and there we go. I want the left key number one, so I press the left key number one. It is all the buttons you want on the cockpit. We have different pages laid out on here. You can have as many buttons on as well, you can have as many buttons as you can fit on the display, but you can have as many of these displays as you want. And as can be seen, we go back 
the big option here flight simulator I've got one set for the A320 the TBM I haven't flown the TBM yet but you can see the lights here the landing lights all of these are live mini displays and they're all programmable uh, the Beach Baron 58 and I got the G1000 TFD and MFD if we go to the this one see there's the PFD um, Diamond 62 I do fly this one love this and programming up that I've got the G1000 here there are the 12 buttons along the bottom if I want to go into more details there are all the knobs and I've got left and right rotaries on the knobs so Stream Deck I will do a how-to video if anyone needs one and you need some more help on setting up the Stream Deck um, put some notes uh, put some replies in the notes below and uh, I'll hang out a video um, let me swing this one into view if I just move that out of the way here's an idea I've had for VR flying but this is the small stream deck and attached to it I've got a rotary a dual rotary encoder now anyone who's been an X-plane flyer and flying in VR there's a product for X-Plane which I haven't bought because it's 99 quid 99 pounds for those offshore and for 99 pounds you get in a rotary encoder an Arduino mini board and it works in VR and it's very very clever but 99 pounds for a product like that if you don't know how to do it it's not bad value if you've got 99 pounds to spare I don't have 99 pounds to spare but I do want to use a rotary in VR you know in this Airbus going to the altitude and using your mouse is it just doesn't feel right does it so my idea is using access and O's I can have one rotary dual rotary encoder and then by pressing one of these buttons along here I will define which button or knob it's going to be linked to in the cockpit and I, this is tactile and this is where this wins over the iPhone one because in the iPhone one you don't know where your fingers are but of course I know where my fingers are here even if I'm in VR and there is even a knob there's a um, you can feel the difference on the center button so you know where the center one means even if you're blindfolded so all of my rotaries can be tagged to one of these I press one of this so let's say this was the altitude selector I would press that and as I turn the knob in VR I'm adjusting the that's what Knobster does and I wanted a Knobster in Microsoft Flight Simulator so that's my next project when and if I get time you might hear the 3D printer going on in the background that's printing some stuff which I'll also talk about uh, perhaps in the new news item on Sunday um, these little plug plug-in modules for the Honeycomb Bravo which still hasn't arrived even though they freed the ship in the canal anyway um, that's that's what this was about um, have a look look up I'll put a link in the show notes below for the panels on flights in TO for lobbies access and O's and as far as the Elgato stream deck goes um, hey Amazon wherever I actually got mine from a UK photo uh, photographic website it's actually delivered from the Netherlands but got here in three days and I am very very happy with it the, the small one I've had that for quite a long time and 
and I was using that for my streaming. But using that, using Stream Deck in flight simulators, and it doesn't have to be Microsoft, of course. I'm just showing you the stuff on Microsoft, but there's no reason why you shouldn't use the same thing on X Plane or P3D. It's one to look out for, I think. So if you do want a how to, let me know. If not, and you want to have a go yourself, all the information's in the notes below. Uh, have a look and have a play. Uh, new show coming up on Sunday, lots to talk about, I think. Um, but it is, of course, Easter Sunday, and we've got the family coming around. So I will try and knock out a show Sunday night. If not, I'll get one out as soon as possible. Until then, as usual, please stay safe, uh, enjoy your flying, and hope to catch you soon. Bye.